He was the last Cleveland mob boss to elude law enforcement, while others wound up dead or behind bars. Tonight, in the third installment of our exclusive series, Bomb City USA, 3 News investigator Rachel Polanski examines the fall of mobster Angelo Leonardo and how he became an informant crushing organized crime families from Cleveland to New York. He was one of the untouchables, heir to Cleveland's crime family. Angelo Leonardo made his bones as a teenager after he avenged his father's death. Angelo was the guy, so he knew everybody. She, on the other hand, was a carpenter's daughter. Donna Congeni Fitzsimmons was five feet tall, maybe 100 pounds. In the courtroom, the patriarchy smirked. An opposing attorney called her a naive lawyerette. And they were not that receptive to a woman uh, becoming the lead prosecutor on a case like this. But it really worked to their detriment. After years of bombings and indictments, the Cleveland Mafia had weakened. But Big Ange Leonardo was still standing strong when that young federal prosecutor, who is now a Rocky River Municipal Court judge, took on the Mafia kingpin. It was thought that we will never really successfully prosecute these cases because there was no evidence of who did what. She came to court shattering glass ceilings, ignoring death threats, and she had a star witness. Mobster turned informant Carmen Zagaria. In June of 1980, while Bostick was walking down the stairs of Zagaria's West Side pet store, Zagaria says Mataggart shot him twice in the head. When he went down to look, Zagaria told jurors, Hans in his right hand had this cleaver, and he was chopping at Bostick's left hand. And in January 1983, Congeni Fitzsimmons nailed her landing with a sweeping verdict. The Cleveland mob's second in command, Angela Leonardo, guilty. Joe Gallo, his lieutenant, guilty. Kevin Taggart, guilty. Hans Grau, guilty. Just, we're very pleased by the uh, results. We really had a great jury. They were very conscientious, and we think the result was justified by the evidence. She credits her team, including FBI agent Bob Frederick, for delivering the evidence that swung the jury. We worked tirelessly. We, we just never stopped because we were so motivated by, you know, knowing that we had a chance to do something really important. And what happened in that Cleveland courtroom would impact the five crime families of New York. Facing a lifelong prison sentence, the aging Leonardo was ready to cut a deal, and Frederick was there to offer one. I said, look, and then I gave him my business card, and I said, if you ever need a favor, give me a call. I think we can work something out for you. He called me a week later. He said, I, I think I want to do business with you guys. Now another young prosecutor was about to win instant fame. That man was Rudy Giuliani. These are extremely dangerous individuals. They're, they're people who have destroyed the lives of other human beings. A few months later, Leonardo, hidden behind a screen to shield his face, became the first sitting mafia boss and the highest ranking mobster to flip. My name is Angelo Leonardo. I am 77 years old, and I am a member of the La Cosa Nostra. With that, the New York and Cleveland Mafia was forever crippled. As for Leonardo, he died quietly in his sleep at the age of 95, but not before he left Bob Frederick with one parting gift. And Angelo is on the stand there, and he's testifying against the bosses, and he's testifying against the enterprise itself. And at the bottom here, he wrote on this, Bob, uh, you made this possible, Angelo. And while that wraps up our series, it does not wrap up our coverage. You can now check out Bomb City USA, the podcast, just launched today, wherever you get your podcasts. Rachel Polanski, 3 News. These have been so interesting. And if you're craving more about this fascinating part of Cleveland's history, as Rachel said, you can find it in the podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you find your podcasts.